Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about dynamic membership groups within Azure Active Directory slash Microsoft Entra. So Microsoft Entra is where we'll be using in this video. If you're not used to it, I, I would def definitely tell you that you should get used to using Microsoft Entra. It's just basically a consolidation of Azure Active Directory, to be honest with you. But today's video is about dynamic membership groups and how we can use rules to get the things that we want. So first and foremost, dynamic membership groups are groups that change based on rule expressions. So you would have a rule that says, okay, based on an employee attribute, such as uh, state, telephone number, you know, uh, job title, and the new one that's in preview mode is an employee hire date, these things will allow certain individuals within your organization to be permitted into a group and then would actually make them get rolled out of a group based if those rules are not met and kept. So it's a really powerful tool and I'm really excited to show you exactly how this works. So one thing that I like to do when I'm teaching within Cloud Scholars is that I like to give up scenarios because you know you can learn something, but if you don't see a scenario that's applied to it or how you would use it in the real world environment, it may not stick as much. So let's talk a bit about the scenarios of why you would use dynamic membership rules. So one of the first things I wanna talk about is when you have in your organization, and I've seen it in a lot of different organizations where you have stale accounts because people are part of groups that are no longer employed there. And if people are part of groups and they were already promoted or they moved to another department and they still have access to certain group membership and the system administrators or help desk have not gotten around to remove them because they didn't know. So how do you go about making sure that your systems, that you can rely on your systems and alleviate that uh, th those responsibilities away from your help desk slash system administrators in your organization. So let's talk a little bit about some of the scenarios that you would use uh, dynamic group memberships and why they would be so powerful. One of the first things I want to talk about is role-based access control. So you can use dynamic membership groups based on specific roles that they have in the organization. So if they have a role in the organization and they'll be a part of this group, once they do not have that role, then you remove them out of the group so that this way you don't have to deal with any types of uh, excessive rights. License assignments. I could tell you how much times that, you know, with licenses, there's licenses in so many different places. Uh, you can use Adobe licenses. There's a lot of cloud licenses you may have your licenses tied into your organization based on a group. Now, if you have somebody in, let's say, an Adobe group, and you put them in that Adobe group, if they no longer need that anymore because A, they left the organization, or B, they're not in that same department, you know, they're gonna still be in that group unless you go ahead and you put a ticket in and say, hey, we need to remove this person from the group. And nine out of 10 times, the user doesn't know that information. So how do you go about doing it the right way? Well, you would use dynamic group members and you would say, OK, if the employee is in this group, then they would get this license. If they're not in the group, then they would, wouldn't get the license or if they have a certain the department title. So hopefully your organization is saying, OK, this person is no longer in this department. They go to this department. So let's say marketing gets the Adobe, but then, you know, sales doesn't get the Adobe. Just throwing something out there then that dynamic rule will say, okay, they're no longer a part of the sales team, uh, the marketing team, excuse me. Now I'm going to move them out because they, now they're a part of the sales team. Okay, so let's talk about another scenario, conditional access policies. So you can say, you can set up a dynamic group and you can have rules, let's say for a contractor. And what this rule will do is say, okay, if you have, are in the contractor's department, just throwing that out there, or even if your account isn't enabled, then you get removed out the contractor's uh, um, group. That group for contractors can now be a part of a conditional access policy, and that conditional access policy may be a bit more strict. And one of the reasons why you would do something like that with making a conditional access policy more strict uh, for contractors versus anybody else in your organization is because contractors, there are times where the HR in your organization and the third party um, HR do not communicate very well. They may not let you know that the contractor is leaving the organization. You only know about the contractor coming in and remoting in. You have no face-to-face -face with the contractor. You need to find out other ways to make sure your organization is safe. And using dynamic group memberships, especially with contractors, is a way, safe way to set up those guardrails for your organization 
to keep your security posture at top notch. Okay, so I feel like I drove the point of the importance of dynamic group memberships within Microsoft Entra. So at this point, let's roll up our sleeves and let's get in front of the uh, Entra portal. And let me show you exactly how you create a dynamic membership rule. All right, so now we're at the Microsoft Entra page. If you don't know how to get there, it's entra.microsoft.com. And then once you get to the Microsoft Entra page, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to groups and we're gonna click on all groups. And then once you're in all groups, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you to create a new group. And then once you create a new group, uh, we're gonna go with security uh, for this tutorial. And then what we're gonna do is dynamic user test group. I'm just gonna walk you through a couple different scenarios of what you can do with this. And just testing purposes. And we're gonna leave as Azure AD roles can be assigned to the group. Uh, you can do that as well if you wanted to. Um, but down here is really what we wanna um, make the changes to. So um, right here where it says assigned, we're gonna use dynamic users. And then right here, we're gonna say add dynamic query. So over here with the add dynamic queries here where all the magic happens, this is really where our rules um, get um, set up from. So you can add different stuff in terms of how you want this person to be in this group. So for instance, I can say, all right, I can choose a property and I could do something like department or I can do something like, um, let's say job title. And let's just say job title equals or contains and I can say manager. So anybody with the job title that equals, that contains manager is gonna be added to this dynamic uh, test group. I can also add a couple different things. I can say, oh, let's add and and I could throw in some other stuff here. And I can just say, um, uh, let's see, what attribute do we wanna use? Department, all right? So now we have the department and I can say equals. And then over here, I can put sales. So that means all the managers in the sales department is gonna be added to this group. And then I can click on save and then I can click on create. So that's all right, but now let's say if I wanted to do something else. So let's say if I wanted to say, okay, new group, and I wanted to use this with a conditional access policy, and I mentioned earlier with contractors. So I could say uh, dynamic contractors, and what I'll do is I'm not gonna say assign, I'm gonna say dynamic users, and I'm gonna say owners, uh, selected. I'm not going to put anything there for owner select. I'm actually going to do I add dynamic query. So for this one now, I'm going to say, okay, let's see if there's anything that says job title. And I'm going to say job title equals contractor. And then for add another expression, I can do anything else as well. So let's just say this is one I mentioned earlier was employee hire date. Now this one is in um, uh, preview mode right now. Uh, so you can use this for, you know, if you want to say, okay, want to give entitlements, but we don't know exactly when the employee hired. So you can put in certain times or actually, if you know the, the employee hire date, you could say, you know, you could give them the entitlement or her the entitlement the day before if you wanted to, uh, just in case, let's say you were out on vacation or whatever, uh, you, can, you can make that modification as well. Uh, but this is one property that we can add to it. But there's a lot of different properties here. So uh, I, I want to use job title for this one as well. But there's a lot of different things. And then plus you can have your own attributes that you want to add to this as well. Your custom attributes right here. Get custom extension properties and you can do that if you have custom extensions. So for this one right here, I'm just going to leave it as contractors, which is perfectly fine for me for the job title. And then what I'll do is I'll create save. And I'll just do save. So anybody who has contractors, and let me just kind of go back to this real quick. If you see the membership type, it says dynamic here. It's because these are dynamic groups and then there's others that are assigned. So what I would do is I'll go over to protection and then on the protection, I go to conditional access policy. And then I go click create new policy. And normally if you watch any of my videos, I like to do a numbering system before it, but this is just for testing purpose. So I'll just say testing dynamic contractors. 
and I would say select groups and I would say users and groups and I just type in con tractors I believe that was it dynamic contractors and then target resource I can say you know selected apps or all cloud apps um, I could put some information in there as well it says don't lock yourself out and then over here in conditions I can say certain risks so I'll say user risk is medium I could say, you know, device platforms. I could put in the device platforms. And you can see if you have done conditional access policies, this is pretty straightforward. Only thing there is I'm just showing you how you can pull in users based on that group using the dynamic membership rules so that this way you can keep your organization much more safe. So this finally popped up and I say configure and I can say any device platform or I could choose. So that's fine with me. I'll do any device platform. Um, I could throw in some locations if I wanted to do it there. And then this is really where the magic happens. And what I can do is say grant access, but I can say require authentication strength for this one. And I could do multi-factor authentication, or I can say, you know what, it's contractor. Uh, so let's do efficient resistant and I can click select. And then sessions, I can do stuff for sessions as well. I like to do sessions a little bit different to be completely honest with you. I just have a policy just for sessions. And then what I can do after that is I can just have a report only mode because this is for testing purposes. And then what I would do is just click on create. All right. So then if I go to my policies, then you can see testing dynamic contractors. So I like to name like the number, the, the policies just so it's easier to read. But down here, you see it right here is testing dynamic contractors and it's in report only mode. All right, that is a wrap for this video. I want to thank you all for watching the video and spending your time with me today. Matter of fact, I want to thank you for allowing me into your day. I really appreciate that. What I want to say to you is if you have any questions or comments, please put it in the comment section below. i would be more than happy to hear from you all and respond to any of the questions that you have. By this time, I'm pretty sure I earned your like and subscribe. So please, if you haven't done so already, smash that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Kieran Trost. And my goal here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant and, of course, consultant to expert. Thank you. See you next time.